Hi guys, the war in Ukraine united all the civilized world against outrageous Russian aggression. But there are a bunch of useful idiots saying, what about Syria and Iraq? Wasn't it the same and the world just ignored this conflict? Haven't NATO bombed Belgrade? Double standards. Ukrainians' refugees are accepted unconditionally, but people from the Middle East are not. This is racism. It's time to debunk this leftist bullshit. Let's start with Ukrainian refugees and compare them with 2021 refugees from the Middle East at the Belarus-Poland border. Here are Ukrainian refugees, women and children. And here are Middle Eastern ones, aggressive men. I can't see any difference in color of the skin, but according to the left, one group is white, another is Middle Eastern. But why do we have such a gender imbalance? Maybe men from the Middle East are fleeing from discrimination caused by women? I don't know. In the case of Ukraine, men aged from 18 to 60 are not allowed to leave the countries by law during the war. It's definitely a discrimination, but for some reason these men are not trying to storm the border and throw the stones at the border officers in the way as our friends from the Middle East did back in 2021. Let's compare refugee preferences. Most of Ukrainians went to Poland with 2.6 million of people, followed by Romania, Hungary and Moldova, 1.2 million in total. These are not the richest country in Europe, and Moldova is actually one of the poorest, but these are neighboring countries, meaning that people are actually fleeing the war and looking for immediate safety. In contrast, Syrians and Iraqi from 2021 had Turkey, Iran and Jordan as neighboring safe countries, yet they got tourist visas and flew to Belarus. Belarus was already a safe country, but they wanted to cross illegally to Poland, but they didn't want to stay there either they wanted to go to Germany. Why? Because Germany gives lots of free money to refugees. Finally, the cost of the journey paid to coyotes was $5,000 per person. Is it common for people who flee in the war to have 5,000 bucks in cash? Probably not. You might say Ukrainians were allowed to cross the border, but Middle Eastern not. That's disgusting. Well, Ukrainians have a visa-free regime for all European Union countries and they can go there as a tourist for 90 days. Syrians and Iraqis need a visa and must go to the embassy. Everything else is against the law. If you think that every Ukrainian entering European Union getting a refugee status automatically, you are wrong. They are entering as a tourist. Then you can go to the office and apply for EU temporary protection status, which give you a right to stay for one year. Nothing like permanent asylum, which our people from Syria and Afghanistan are getting. You can potentially get a permanent asylum as well, but only if your house was destroyed during the war and it's a lengthy process and you cannot go back to Ukraine after an extended period of time. Which is no-no for most of the Ukrainians. According to the recent poll, 79% of Ukrainian refugees wanted to go back to Ukraine after the war. The remaining 21% would need to find a job and apply for EU residence permit after one year. Probably 10% will be able to do that, but the rest 11% eventually will go back. My family stayed in Ukraine all the time in the safer western part, but now they are ready to go back to Kyiv and will do this in a couple of days. In contrast, in Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan there was no active war back in 2021, yet these mostly young men wanted to come to Europe for a better life, sponsored by German taxpayers. And I have nothing against it, these are not my money, but you can't compare Ukrainian refugees to them, sorry. And don't get me wrong, there are a bunch of legitimate Syrian refugees. When the war was in the active stage, they crossed the border with Turkey and Iraq. I was at the Syrian border last fall. There are tons of people from Syria living successful lives there, opening amazing restaurants. Some are still living in refugee camps and it's quite sad, but the people who were on the Polish border last year have nothing to do with that. They were just economical refugees with $5,000 in cash for this illegal trip. Leftist hoax number two. The world ignored bombardment of the Middle East by US and allies and now Russia doing exactly the same with Ukraine. Russia is being punished, but US was not. Double standards. I think the left should go further and say that the bombardment of Dresden in 1945 was a crime against humanity and Hitler was just a victim of white colonialism. Sorry, I'm not a pacifist. Some wars are justified and some evil government must be overthrown at all costs. Let's compare conflicts in the Middle East with Ukraine and see the difference. 
To make it less subjective, we will look at two major factors. One, evil regime. Two, how many civilians were killed and why. First case is Afghanistan. Taliban is an openly terrorist Islamic organization who did several crimes against humanity, including genocide of Shia minority of Hazara people. They destroyed ancient Buddhists in Bamiyan and the most important, Taliban openly promised the destruction of the sinful West, providing refuge to Osama bin Laden. In contrast, Ukrainian government didn't do any genocide and had no plans of destroying Western civilization. They just wanted to fight the corruption and join the EU. Putin wanted to resurrect Soviet Union and created a fake narrative about Nazi government of Ukraine as a pretext of invasion. That's not a justifiable reason, sorry. What about NATO war crimes in Afghanistan? Wikipedia never lies. There is a list of crimes uh, and it's a bit short for the 20 years of operation, but let's check some of them. For example, in 2011, the American Marine surgeon killed an unarmed, repeatedly wounded Afghan fighter in Helmand province. In 2013, he received a life sentence and was dismissed with disgrace and dishonor from American Marines. Russian soldiers are killing unarmed civilians regularly, raping young girls at mass and looting. Bucha massacre now is a well-attested event, but it's just a drop in a huge sea of violence. Russia says it's all fake news and Nazi did it. Feel the difference? What about airstrikes? Well, there was nothing to bomb in Afghanistan because it's mostly rural and mountainous. And here is the comparison chart with Iraq and Syria. 4,000 civilian casualties in 20 years. That's not a lot. However, there is one problematic airstrike, which is the Kunduz Hospital airstrike in 2015. Wikipedia told us that it was a mistake according to the US military. The strike happened on October 3 and on October 7, Obama issued an apology statement and promised some payment to affected families. On April 8, 2022, Kramatorsk train station was attacked by Russian Tochka U missile, killing 57 people who wanted to evacuate. It's proved not only by independent satellite evidence, but also by the fact that Russian media published the news right after that they bombed Ukrainian army in Kramatorsk. Then they have to delete this news when they realize that these were all civilians. Instead of apology, they claim that Ukrainians did it as a false flag operation. Feel the difference? Is it really about double standards? Next example, Iraq. Saddam Hussein was a truly evil man. He made a full-scale invasion of Iran in 1980 for no reason, killing at least 100,000 of civilians and 400,000 of soldiers on both sides. He did ethnic cleansing of the Kurdish population in Iraq, resulting in additional 100,000 civilian deaths. It is true that the official reason of the US going to war there was a fake story about weapons of mass destruction which Saddam didn't possess and it was wrong. But the claim of the left that the whole invasion was illegal and Saddam was a victim is just utterly gross manipulation. The Iraq invasion was quite legitimate for the totality of crimes, and it was not the first time the US tried to pacify the guy. There were strikes in 1993, 1996 and 1998 before the full-scale invasion in 2003. It is true that 6,000 civilians died in Iraq within one month of operation and it's extremely sad, but the US managed to capture the whole country and end Saddam rule. Ukrainians' numbers are unclear at that point, but at least 7.5 thousand of bodies were found so far. And we have zero data from Mariupol, which can be additionally 20 to 30 thousand, according to some reports. If you look at that chart, you can see that the military strikes were not that deadly to civilians in later years. 12,000 over the period of 20 years is a lot, but nothing like 100 thousand of civilian death caused by ISIS in Iraq in just recent years. Unfortunately, sometimes you have a hard choice to sacrifice civilian lives to prevent bigger massacres. Saddam and ISIS killed at least 10 times more Iraqis than US did. Finally, Syria. I was there several times before the war and Bashar Assad was not really an evil man before the war. You might disagree with me, it's fine, but I don't know any genocide or religious discrimination before the war. Then the US decided to overthrow the Syrian regime for no legitimate reason by sponsoring anti-Assad opposition movement, giving them weapons and creating unrecognized parallel government. This is exactly what Putin did in Ukraine back in 2014 by creating Lugansk and Donetsk People's Republic. 
Neither of this is cool, but you can't compare it to the current full-scale invasion of Ukraine. There were no airstrikes on Syria at initial stages. Later, there were two different types of airstrikes. First, against Assad regime, like 2017 Shairat airstrikes, the reason of which was chemical weapon attack and civilian regime was notified by US through its ally Russia, and as the result, zero civilians were killed. You can go on Wikipedia and check the rest of offenses. The civilian casualties are minimal. Another type of airstrikes are against terrorists like ISIS and Hezbollah. They were targeting specific people, not infrastructure, and killed a bunch of innocent civilians who were around. It is questionable whether the death of terrorists justified the death of several unrelated civilians and are there any better way to fight the terrorism. But you can't compare it with what Putin is doing in Ukraine right now by randomly killing civilians using prohibited cluster bombs. There is no double standard here. And to be fair, cluster bombs were used in Syria as well, in the most deadliest battle of Aleppo, which took like four years and brought enormous destruction. And nope, it was not done by US, but by Assad forces, fully supported and equipped by Russia. Russia leveled my favorite city in Syria, Aleppo, and now they did exactly the same with Mariupol. The same general who did all these atrocities in Syria now is the chief commander of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Our final example is NATO bombardment of Serbia during the war in Kosovo. The left doesn't really use this as a propaganda because Serbians are white Slavs and Kosovars are Middle Eastern Muslims, but this comparison is heavily used by the Russian propaganda and indeed, this case has some striking similarities to the current war. But the details are extremely important, and we need to debunk this as well. The usual neutral explanation of the Kosovo conflict is that there was a federation of Yugoslavia which had a bunch of republics in it. After the dissolution in 1991, all republics were allowed to become independent countries, including Serbia. Kosovo was not a republic, but an autonomous region, and the reform had no right to become an independent, and had to be part of the newly created Serbian nation-state. The problem was that Kosovo was predominantly Muslim Albanians. 77% of people were Albanian according to census of 1981, and the rest of Serbia were Christian Orthodox Serbs. That drove nationalism on both sides and claims that Kosovo is a core historical land for both Serbians and Albanians. Kosovar Albanians wanted to leave Serbia and join neighboring independent Albania. For this purpose, a terrorist organization called Kosovo Liberation Army KLA, was created. This organization is responsible for killing Serbian minority civilians and destroying Christian monastery. The Serbian government used an army to fight this back, killing Albanian civilians and destroying mosques. Basically, you have an ethno-religious conflict where both sides seem to be equally responsible for the atrocities. But then NATO came and asked Serbians to stop killing innocent Albanians in Kosovo. Serbia refused and NATO bombing started, with the goal of deposing Serbian government. From the legal standpoint, Kosovo was recognized as part of Serbia, and the Serbian government was authorized to fight KLA, which was classified as a terrorist, not only in Serbia, but also in France and US, at least on the early stages. The United Nations did not authorize NATO strike, which complicates the situation. Now, the Russian propaganda equates this to the current situation where Ukraine is a Serbia, Kosovo is Donbas, and Russia is the United States of America. The crucial problem with that logic are, as always, in details. First, Ukraine and Donbas are kind of the same people, lived in peace and harmony all the times, and the whole conflict was artificially constructed by Russia by dividing people of Donbas along political lines, pro-Russia, vs pro-Western. Serbia and Kosovo is a pure ethno-religious conflict with a century-long history. Second, Serbia was doing an active offense against Kosovo. People were dying on both sides prior to NATO bombing. The conflict on Donbas was frozen and basically like five civilians died within the last two years. Ukraine had no immediate plans to recapture Donbas, despite Putin's claims. However, there is a much larger problem with Kosovo, and it's Serbian nationalism and history of ethnic cleansing. Prior to the Kosovo War, there was a Bosnian War. In short, you have Serbs, Croats and Bosniaks. 
three nations speaking exactly the same language, but having different religions. Serbs are Orthodox, Croats are Catholics and Bosniaks are Muslims. Serbian nationalism was based on a simple idea that they were the first inhabitants and all Yugoslavia is basically their historical land. Everyone else there were invaders who took that land illegally. The plan in Serbia under President Slobodan Milosevic was simple. To annex all the historical Serbian lands from neighboring states and remove all non-Serbs from it. Bosnia and Herzegovina after the independence in 1992 was a crazy mix of Serbs, Bosniaks and Croats. And as the result, the most weak politically speaking. Serbia took the opportunity and created a separatist Serbian state inside of it killing all the Bosnian population. Similarly, Serbs created a separatist republic in Croatia, but instead of mass killing of Catholic brothers, they just asked Croatians to move out, and they left. To be fair, Croatia created a separatist republic in Bosnia as well. The Serbian explanation of the situation is that it was quite a mess on both sides and everyone is responsible for ethnic cleansing. But if you check the data on civilian death, 31,000 Bosniaks, 2.4 thousand Croats and 4.1 thousand Serbs, we have a clear 10x difference in terms of Bosniaks and it's pretty clear that there was a genocide of Bosnian population. And if you investigate deeper, it was all done by Serbs, not Croats. And it was officially supported by the Serbian government. At the end, Serbia lost the war in 1995 due to NATO intervention and started a plan B to clean its own land from Albanians and presenting it as a fight against terrorist KLA. We don't have 100% proof that Serbia planned full genocide of Kosovars, but everything Serbians did in Kosovo back then points into that direction. NATO didn't want another genocide to happen. Knowing Serbs too well, they decided that it's time to punish Serbia for Bosnian war in the same way as Nazi Germany was punished and started the bombardments. Which makes sense to me. At the very end, there was an international tribunal and Milosevic was convicted for genocide in Bosnia. Now, let's talk about NATO bombings. There were 20,000 of missiles during 78 days, which is 10x more than the current 1500 plus coming from Russia. There were around 500 civilians killed in Serbia, which is very low. Just one Kramatorsk railway station attack took 57 lives. Clearly, NATO was targeting military infrastructure and notified the Serbian side to reduce civilian losses. Kosovo was a very different case and it can't be compared with Ukraine. Now it's time for the last hoax of today. Comparing Russia-Ukraine war to Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Basically, Palestine is fighting hard against big and evil Israel in the same way as Ukraine does, but Palestinians are terrorists and Ukrainians are heroes double standards again. What are the proofs? Well, there was a story of Ukrainian soldiers blew himself on the bridge to destroy it and prevent Russian army to advance. Isn't it the same when Palestinian fighter blowing the bus full of Jews? Leftist logic, details do not matter. I have a separate video about Israel, you can check it in here when you have some time, but when I discuss this topic with the leftists, I have only one question. You have a de facto independent Gaza Strip since 2005. Why instead of building schools, hospitals and maybe power station, yep, all the energy is coming from evil Israel, Palestine spends all money on missiles against peaceful Israelis. And the usual answer I get is that the land of Palestine was stolen by the evil Zionist and they have to recapture it first. Well, independently whether you agree with that statement or not, the equivalent would be that Ukraine would arm itself to recapture Crimea and Donbas, which was stolen eight years ago, and do constant terrorist activities on that territory instead of building its economy. That's not what Ukraine is doing. But the Palestine behavior actually reminds the Russian one. They believe that Ukraine is Russian land and it needs to be liberated. For Palestinians, Israel has no right to exist and must be destroyed. None of Russian fighters have a land ownership certificate in Ukraine, neither they have even been there before, just some nationalistic propaganda that this is the land of their ancestors. Exactly the same as in Palestine. Ukrainians and Israelis, in contrast, have ownership certificates, live there all their lives and want to be a part of democratic nations. The economies of Russia and Palestine are in deep shit, but instead of building something for their own people, they desperately try to invade their neighbor. 
The majority of Russian speakers in Ukraine support the state, in the same way as Israeli Arabs want to be part of Israel. Basically, Palestine is a weak Russia. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next time. Bye!